Next to stay on us, we're going to start with the nation. Why Buhari didn't intervene in Adama poll crisis by government? Fed okay is 1.5 trillion era for roads. Policemen to undergo hepatitis B tests. DMO Nigeria not defaulting on China debt repayments. Acting LP chair rejects suspension by party INEC. Nwayawu is Ohanese's president. Okay, which story are we starting with? Um, Let's start with uh, the DMOs. That's the Debt Management Office uh, said yesterday that there is no iota of truth in a report that Nigeria was defaulting in the repayment of the loans it took from China. So uh, reacting to the story uh, captioned, Nigeria defaulting in Chinese loan repayment, the office said Nigeria has not breached the agreement it has with its signed creditor. And Nigeria is fully committed to honoring its debt obligations and has not defaulted on any of these debt service obligations. So uh, they, they were rebuting um, the, um, the fact that they said Nigeria had incurred a penalty of 41.31 billion yeah. for defaulting on the Chinese loan and, you know, that they used to reactivate the country's rail lines. Right. And the DMO denied it, said there's nothing like that. So there's a lot so of said, propaganda going on. Yes, right now, going so. on. Yeah, they said, however, they didn't now tell us how much they are yes. owing. Yeah. Yes, the Chinese government. But since they said they are not owing them. All right. Okay. Uh, let me take the banana story. So the, pres uh, the federal government was asked yesterday, actually the Minister of Information and Culture was asked yesterday why the president did not get involved in the whole Fintini banana story that happened in Damara State. Um, and he said that the president doesn't get involved in micromanaging, that that was INEC's job, and the president cannot intervene in this. However, um, the president-elect, Ashwaji uh, Bola has also um, congratulated in his congratulatory message to the winners of all the various houses um, and the president-elect um, from yesterday's, from, from last Saturday's elections. And he also said that investigations also should be held concerning what happened in Adamo, and those who are aggrieved should go to the court for redress. Okay, it just sounds a bit contradictory. Yesterday, INEC was saying that uh, there's so much they can do given the law and, you know, they had to report to the presidency because these wrecks are appointed by the presidency. Anyway, since they're going to court, we'll see how that... Let me just quote, it. just to add to what, just yeah. quote what I, um, the minister said. He said the chairman of INEC, of INEC is in charge of all employees and is handling it. So what do you want the government to do? Or whether the president... So he's disappointed with the wreck. Um, the Honorable Minister said that the president does not micromanage any institution. So we'll see where, how this wreck could therefore be um, prosecuted for what he did. Um, yes. So the Inspector General of Police, Usman Ali, has approved a three-day hepatitis B test for policemen. Um, the screening is being done in partnership with the Daniel Onoja Foundation. And um, the IGP says that the development is in line with this administration's policy on health and wellness among, you know, men of the police officers and men of the police force. Right. Um, as we, he says that um, this is targeted at creating awareness on hepatitis B virus, which infects more than 300 people worldwide and is the main cause of liver disease and liver cancer and so has admonished officers and men of the force to take advantage of this exercise um hepatitis b as we know it's you i think it's sexually transmitted you know and so and, and i know it's quite a serious a lot of people talk about hiv but re, don't really yeah. um have information on hepatitis b so it's good to see <coughs> our police force doing something about that and protecting our officers all right so i want to take the story about a very sad story um the number of killings that have taken place in Kaduna State. There was a report from the Commissioner of Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Arunwa, in Kaduna. He was presented that report to the Governor, Nasir El Rufai, and he detailed from last year to this year the number of people that have been killed um, through banditry, terrorism, and communal clashes to be 1,266. Last year alone, 1,052 people were killed. And in this year, between January and March, 214 persons have been killed as well. They spoke about how 12 females um, um, and 10 minors were raped by 
terrorists than bandits. He also mentioned how 717 bandits were neutralized. Spoke about how the fact that um, the crisis that has been, the insecurity challenges that has been going on, um, based on the effect of the troops, they were able to kill 628 um, um, insurgents, insurg is, um, terrorist bandits. You know, they, we don't even know which name. Terrorist bandits were also oh, nice. killed and realized. Um, it, the governor expressed his worry that is so sad. He said his heart goes out to all the families that have lost someone and that they would be. He said the, um, they, they put each local government as well and he spoke about the statistics being really worrisome and that, but there's been improvement year on year in the number of <coughs> deaths. So even though this seems like a shocking number that a thousand and 52 people died last year. It's still less than the year before, so there's been improvement, but we okay. continue to pray for peace within Kaduna State. Moving on now to the punch in security. Local rice price jumped by 200%. Picture story, Lagos Mob Bonds BRT buses. Bus, actually, as driver dies in crash. Ogun father chains starves to children to death. Substandard materials quacks caused Banana Island building collapse, says Report, El Rufai raises the alarm over insecurity ahead May 29th. Adama Apo, uh, police warned against cover-up. FAC drops, FAC allocation drops as federal government states share 715 billion naira. And Buhari returns a void Sudan airspace. Okay. Let me take the picture story. Story, go ahead. <sighs> Here we go again, the way we handle things. So they say an unidentified commercial bus driver died um, yesterday in an accident. Um, the bus driver, th this particular commercial bus and uh, BRT bus collided. They said this happened along the Oshoki Expressway. The commercial driver, the commercial bus was coming from Lagos Island, heading to Ojoduberga when this accident occurred. They said he... The commercial bus was at top speed when it lost control along the Ifako Bridge and collided with the BRT. And when this happened, the people around, urchins, what do you call them, hoodlums, whatever, decided oh, that the best, the best way to handle this was to set the BRT bus and ablaze. And belongs to all of us. I don't understand. A few, uh, about seven people were injured in that crash. And then, anyway, government is saying, stop behaving like that. That is not how to handle this sort of situation. Allow the law to, you know, to, um, to take control of the situation. I don't even know who taught anybody that you just go, you see an accident scene, and the first thing you do is either you I'm kill people people's. or you burn property. Yeah. It just makes so no sense. It goes back to the reorientation we need. You know, when we talk about people, we also have to have to take ownership. And that goes back to local government, community leaders, um, 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 just all leaders across all levels. We begin to we begin to talk to young people and know how to deal with issues. We can't keep burning out uh, infrastructure that belongs to all of us. It doesn't make any sense. Another human um, interest story. How are we going to break? Go ahead, please. Okay, so a 45 year old man, Benga Ogun Fadike, uh, has been arrested for allegedly chaining, starving, and locking his two children in solitary confinement, which led to their death. Now, the suspect was arrested on Tuesday in Ibiade Ogun, Waterside Local Government Area of Ogun State, by men of the State Security Network, uh, Amoteko Corps. And um, according to the story, he said um, the father accused the children of um, stealing and then he decided to lock them up so that they are not able to steal anymore. Uh, they are 16, 17, and 18. This happened uh, last year. And so uh, two of them died because they were not properly taken care of, and he went ahead and buried them. So apparently one of them was, you know, around the area when they found their auntie and reported the matter. So the ex-wife now took it up and took him to the police and that's why they started investigations and by the time they asked him he said ah, no that's the two that died they were ill he took them to the hospital investigation has not been able to find the hospital that he claimed he took them to he said he buried them in a particular area they still be trying to locate where the corpses are they can't find it so they said um, further investigation will continue uh, to know what is happening i just did, there was no uh, mention of the third child so i don't know where she is at the moment but i think the government needs to do something and probably evaluate him. I think it's crazy. Still on punch? Go ahead, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so the there's update on um, rice. They said that local rice, according to the papers, 
prices have jumped by over 200 percent in seven years and um, <coughs> largely blamed on insecurity so the report on rice was based on the fact that despite all the interventions by central bank of nigeria um, the data from selected food price watch report by the nigerian bureau of statistics show that there's been over, um, two specifically 200 over 200 percent increase in the price of rice and even though there was um, the president flagged off the rice pyramid with the parties they said that after the um, closure of the borders the report shows that after closure of borders the inflation insecurity all of this combined together has increased the price the the Rice Processors Association of Nigeria, Director General Andy Ikwelem, said that the for that nobody in Nigeria can claim not to be aware of the fact that the inflation would affect rice. And he mentioned there was good news during the period when the border was closed. Many Nigerians had to eat local rice. And now that the border has opened, importation of rice from Thailand has increased again. That when it, they closed the border, it dropped and improved the system. But now it has gone back up. He also mentioned the cost of fertilizers as part of the major um, reason price of rice would continue to go up, even from the party that the input cost for rice plantation is very high from fertilizers to the process to the process of planting that all <coughs> of this are what are, is affecting in, um, the hike in rice cost as well as insecurity in terms of moving the finished the paddy to processing all of that joined together is the reason that the rice prices will continue to go up um, there, is, <coughs> there isn't any solution of how to bring the price down oh, from the yeah. part of the rice oh. processing people but the federal the um, our president is feeling like according to him the report is saying that he feels that if we do more production the prices would organically go down but the rice processors are saying that the cost of production is high so it really cannot bring the prices Prices down gone. so okay. i was going to take the fax story so fax has finally shared 714 billion with all the three tiers of government it's actually reduced by 8 billion naira compared to last month but i was quite really drawn to the figures because yeah the, the, the our revenue is from this from these numbers is coming from three main sources the statutory the gross statutory revenue value added tax and electronic money <laughs> transfer levies. I was surprised that electronic money is also oh a major revenue for our country. No, or 15 that billion. That tells you why the banks are. So 15 mm. billion came from um, the <laughs> electronic transfers. Interestingly, wow. VAT has um, 218 billion was shared, mm. and the others were the gross term statutory requirements. But but it's just interesting how our electronic money, levies. Our money, our money. It's actually our money. <laughs> so we should start holding that account. It now. It's our money. It's our money. <laughs> it's our money. <laughs> it's not their money. <laughs> okay, let us move on <laughs> to <laughs> Vanguard. Okay, the Tinubu Fintiristic Police Inquest into Adama polls. Ido Fitri, federal government declares <coughs> Friday and Monday. Gotta love Nigeria. Two days public holidays. Okay. You know Roman scam. Lady arrested for allegedly defrauding German of $220,000. Wow. Not Naira. Dollars. <laughs> Wait, <now>. Due <laughs> judicial process will be followed on Araro Meda NNPC matter, says Buhari. Uh, energy po poverty. Over 60% of Nigeria's population lack supply, says NLNG. DMO dismisses false claims on China loan payment. Ohaneze fumes over continued detention of Kanu. Insecurity, 1,266 killed, 4,973 kidnapped in 15 months, says Kaduna government. And crude oil exports, Malami allegedly paid $200 million as whistleblower fees, says reps. Hmm, I got to read that story. Okay, which story? Yeah, so okay. the Apex Igbo social cultural organization, Ohaneze Ndibu, worldwide yesterday expressed, <laughs> <laughs> expressed the displeasure over the continued detention of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, Mazin Namdi Kanu, by the Department of State Services, uh, DSS, in the country. So the Igbo organization raised concern about the federal government's alleged disobedience of court orders, bordering on the release and freedom of IPOB leader from detention. It went ahead to call on the federal government to address the health challenge facing Namdekanu and um, yeah, appealing to uh, the federal government to allow I the IPOB leader to go for medical treatment urgently. So um, according to the story, they said 
we, in strong terms, we frown at the level of injustices meted out on our brother Mazen Namdekano, especially as it borders on his health and the federal government's continuous refusal to obey court orders. Security of lives and property are the fundamental responsibilities of every government, and Mazen Namdekano's life is now at stake. And so the appeal is for uh, all the quarters that are supposed to respond to the court order, release him so that he can go take care of himself. They also said that um, the governor of Anambra State, Soludo, has even you know, agreed to shorty for him when that release comes. And so they are calling on the federal government to do the needful. Uh, so we have a 21-year-old girl called Lady Atwana Choma. She's been arrested by operatives of the police special fraud unit in Ikoyi here in Lagos for allegedly defrauding a German citizen of $220,000. Um, they say she's also a graduate of economics from the Anamdi Zikwe Uni University. Um, they said that she lured a 50-year-old German um, on Instagram and she feigned romantic intentions towards him to the point she um, encouraged him to sell his property in Germany mm. and asked him to, you know, send the money to her and they were going to settle here as husband and wife. Wow. In Ooh. fact, it was with the, I don't want to say connivance, or the collaboration of her family. They did like mm. a traditional wedding he came to you know he came to visit they did a traditional wedding or introduction in a quiet bomb so um so she's been arrested mm. and she's been asked about the proceeds where what she's used the when money went. for she had, she said she bought uh, two room flats somewhere in lecky and that Here. the rest of the money Smoke she <laughs> the rest of the money she put um she spent on her mother's medical bills, bills. Wow. but i was looking for the <laughs> place that says that confirms that she defrauded. defrauded. Mm. Mm. Because I don't know if he came back to Nigeria and couldn't find her, mm. or is it that um, someone heard what he had done and assumed that she had defrauded him? Right. Mm. I'm not saying, I, I just wanted to find but more yeah, in love specifics. Yes, could it be a love relationship gone sour? That's I just would like sounding. to see more information, but just based on this Bill. report, it does not really tie mm, it for it. me. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the House of Representatives had ad hoc committee that is investigating the 48 million barrels of crude amounting to $2.4 billion um, um, and crude oil exports to China from 2014 to date. Um, said they have uncovered the payment of $200 million being paid by the Attorney General to whistleblowers eh? according to them the process of that this was according to them um the 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 AG attorney general of the federation abubakar malami um and the minister of finance had not they had not been actually cooperating with the committee when they've asked them to give them answers to these questions concerning these 200 million dollars that were paid according to them uh, they've not been getting any form of cooperation cooperation from them <laughs> they've seen documentations from the accountant general's office where the Minister of Finance approved payment of substantial amounts of money to so-called whistleblowers where details of monies recovered were not provided. Mm -hmm. um, so they've heard of this and their investigation and asked questions. Now, this, I mean, committee's job is to always follow the money. Okay, you're paying this amount of money. Are you statutorily allowed to pay the amount of money? You see, being away, you're paying this amount of money. And on what basis are these, are these whistleblowers being paid? Mm -hmm. That's their own job to investigate but according to them they've not been given any kind of got any responses from these two parties so they're asking and they're hoping that they can get responses from them but you oh, know when, when before that becomes another industry to siphon money uh, <laughs> i want to take the story of um the president <coughs> saying that concerning the case of senator Arame, they would follow judicial process so backstory january 17 2022 <coughs> senator Arame was sacked from being the chairman of um nnpc and he took the case to court and uh, just the, the judge federal high court abuja uh, justice inyang Ekwo had sent had said that it was illegal for him to be removed the way it was done it was wrongful <coughs> sack and disruption of his appointment and so they said that the government should pay him five billion naira mm. as compensation because he was meant to be sworn in they also said that every process that the NNPC board, has, any, any decision made by NNPC board during the past one year is now null, null and null void. void. Wow. Mm. And the, the presidency through Femi Adesino said that according to them, they have already allowed the 
they are going to allow the due judicial um, process take place. But the Office of the Attorney General said that they haven't received a formal ruling from on this situation from 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 the courts and so they are waiting until they get it and they will respond to it but you know nigeria with, uh, this when, we, when they find us these are monies that we can avoid you know if we have to pay it just by following due process okay. we should just do things right nigerian tribune our final paper abuja collapsed while claimed two lives or rescue says fema the smith's delta killer cop arranged remanded in <coughs> prison uh fg declares money on Mo uh, monday Friday and Monday public holidays. Fire God's Broadcasting Corporation in Oyo State's studio. <coughs> uh, Find a story we've not taken. At Cardinal Security, bandits killed over a thousand, kidnapped over almost five thousand people in fifteen months. Okay, which story? Yes. Um, so Fema, that's the Federal Capital Territory Emergency Management Agency, has confirmed the death of two persons and also the rescue of four other individuals. Um, at a collapsed wall in uh, Ademola, at Ademola, at Adeto Kumbo Crescent, from Wuse to Abuja. Mm -hmm. The um, DG for FEMA says that the building under construction, um, that uh, they received a call between 10 to 11 a.m. that the building had collapsed and they found it to be close to UBA at, um, UBA at the Ademola, Adeto Kumbo Crescent, Wuse to. And he said that the building under construction it that, collapse. So the building under construction was, uh, wasn't the one that collapsed, that they were building very close to another <coughs> building. And that building, that they had gone beyond where they were supposed to, you know, build their own. And the wall of the, of the neighbor fell yeah. on the artisans. The artisans mm. were on top of the building when it fell. Two of them died, uh, four were rescued. There are a few others in hospital right now. And he just says that, you know, um, Abuja residents should pay attention to the um, plan, you know, to the Abuja plan and also follow building approvals before they embark on buildings. I mean, we just yeah. talked about this yesterday. Yeah. We mm -hmm. talk about this all the time. All the time. Just... So there's a Delta <coughs> policeman, Inspector Ubi Ebri, who was dismissed for allegedly shooting to death one Onyeka Ibi recall. We always say that when a police officer shoots, the best the police can do is dismiss them. Mm -hmm. is, the, is, the, is the victim's family or the state that can therefore prosecute, and that's what was done here. So um, he had killed this um, Onyeka Ibi as a man during a stop and search back in April 5th in Delta State. I was on Wednesday arraigned in court and remanded in prison. He was charged to the magistrate's court uh, and um, the prosecutor, G. O. Okwegbe, was in, was in court to ensure that um, he was being arraigned. So, I mean, the procedure has started, but just for people to know that when the, this kind of things happen, the best the police can do is dismiss the person, but mm. we, we must follow the case through to prosecute and ensure that justice is served. Yeah, so this the person police is, cannot prosecute. They will dismiss. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they, they, they told us before that they will dismiss. Yes. Prosecute. Well, well, now, that's what the police that commission can is, do based on what we've been told so yeah. far. To hear that. Okay. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back.